What's up, street dogs? Street gods. Yes, it's some Marco Duplex songs. Okay. Eric came in the house. Fresh cut from Cindy's. Uh, notice you got a. <laughs> All hail the Brad Fury, Brad Pitt Fury uh, haircut. Shout out to my friend Bill Block and my friend Brad Pitt. EK is the new Brad Pitt. I mean, actually, uh, some fun facts. A, I mean, I'm way more jacked than uh, Brad Pitt. Roughly the same dimensions. Uh, I mean, I got a kid, but I ain't estranged from my kid. Cindy is essentially my Angelia Jolie. You know, they call it Bradgelinas. Oh, check it out. Lustig open now, too. It's like kind of like a nice Austrian restaurant or something. Not 100% sure about all the details, but alas, uh, the good things about it is uh, yeah, it's uh, Good, it's good. So, real men have an iPhone SE. Okay, so the thoughts of the day, the thoughts of the day, the thoughts of the day. Let's see, focus, focusing, focusing. Focus, focus. Whenever I try to park in LA, my motto is skinny, 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 skinny. Yeah, okay, anyways. So. Suit up! Okay, first thought, first thought. How does one become more masculine? How does one become more like EK? Tell you all the secrets. Tell you all the pointy Bitcoin map. But okay, so um, pain and suffering. Uh, okay, so these are some uh, some big issues. Big issues. Uh, we tend to have this foolish idea that more pain, more suffering, more toil is more virtuous, right? But uh, pain and suffering and glorification and pain and suffering and toil and labor and work. Hard work. Just got to put in the work. I'm going to get here. You are Slave. S-L-A-V-E. Okay. So, um, like, there's this notion in Italian it's called Spreta Zerza or something. Spreta Spreta Zerza. I don't even know how to pronounce it. I can't even pass that, pronounce that, pass that verse AC, okay? So that's when you know somebody's like a legit thinker is that like they know all these like big ass you know these like high concept words and concept like spread a zerza s p r e t u z z r it essentially means like studied carelessness it's kind of like you just pop out of the house just throw on whatever thing and then you just kind of strutting your stuff right and then uh, you don't really think twice about it and you look uh, you look good right so 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 what is this. Awa D. Hmm, maybe I should. Maybe I should. Uh, what is this? What is it? January. Please, RSV by January 5th. Very. January 19th. Okay. Oh, fun fact. Birthday's coming up. One was. Eric Kimborn, uh, heavyweight since uh, 1988. Shout out to my best man, Justin's. Um, so yeah, gonna, my birthday is January 31st, 1988. Uh, very easy to remember, my birthday is the last day of the month. And actually, uh, how do you know if somebody a real friend or not is, if they actually remember your birthday, it's actually a, uh, and my best man, uh, one of my best friends, Kevin, uh, his birthday is March. 
So just try to try remember people's birthdays. I just put in Google Calendar as a recurring event indefinitely. Let's get, oh wow, look at this. What does it mean, what does it mean? Wow, look at this, so beautiful. Actually a pro tip is a blogger, vlogger. Just interact with it. I need to start putting on timestamps. Like, I think about a random amount of time. Actually, the, the interesting uh, notion of timestamps, right, is, I mean, timestamps can be kind of uh, distracting, but then I guess the, the upside and the interest is, uh, I watch these old vids, I'm like, oh wow, that was like four years ago. That's crazy. So, actually, what's interesting is, with masculinity, manliness, blah, blahs, right? Um, what's interesting is, I look at old videos of myself before I got a sexy ass haircut from Cindy. Just get a wall buzzer WHL on Amazon's. Just uh, clip it your size, she just cut it for me. You can do it yourself. Uh, it's actually pretty easy. I mean, things that people spend way too much money on is haircuts. I'm mean, like, uh, I think the issue, or I mean the reason why guys nowadays spend so much money on haircuts is that like everyone's fat and they have the head fat rolls. So then you want a good ass haircut to hide the fat head rolls. The best way to just look sexy is super simple. Get the wall uh, wireless buzzer, just shave the sides, just take off your glasses. You can just freehand it, right? Uh, just do it in the bathroom and then just vacuum, just do it over the toilet and then flush it afterwards. That's a nice picture. Good job, Vitrine's team. Oh yeah, nice pictures, nice pictures. Hmm, did Christopher Anderson shoot these photos? Looks like a Chris Anderson photo from the, the Magnums. Hey, what's up, brothers? You stay, stay cozy, stay cozy. Yep. Um, it's on the block. Hmm, kind of like this. Minimalism in this. Nice pink. Pink, 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 pink. Sun loves pink. It's a nice picture. It's super minimalistic. Pink on pink on pink. 20 cars matte pink, okay? Uh, what's the, the best car to drive? <laughs> matte pink Hyundai Sonata. <laughs> was, shout out to my friend Armando, the one of the owners at the place, Gardena? Where you got the my mom's Sonata fixed? Um, when Armando, I'm like, what car, what, should I, what car should I wrap the, the Sonata, right? My mom's old Sonata is like matte pink. Oh yeah. Apples at 877 Washington. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. What does it mean? Look at all these LEDs. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 20 cars, matte black. Okay, so also a, a fun little activity y'all could get is, oh wow. So you don't need a, a glow light thingy. Just get a Apple, Thing in your backgrounds, okay. Oh, and also shout out to the, the Shea. This nice ass hotel here. I think it's owned by the Hilton or something. Yeah, it's super, super nice. Uh, it's good, it's good. Um, so, yeah, um, trust nobody who does CrossFit, marathon or ultra marathon. Don't truck the rock, he's juicing his eyeballs. Actually, um, just watch the, the Baywatch trailer with Zac Efron, the I think it came out in 2017. Rock is not even that giant. Like he's got kind of like a belly fat and dude, his legs super skinny. I'm like, like the raw is like, how much can you lift, bro? How much can you deadlift? How much can you squat? How can you atlas lift, right? I'm like, am I strong in the rock? I'm like, I can lift a thousand pounds. Can the rock do that? Probably not. And actually, in fact, I don't know. No, 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 non steroiders who could lift as much weight as me. Um, what's the world work for the deadlift? What? 500 kilograms. You might need to do that. 500. <laughs> okay, this might get this is my new goal, guys. Super, super simple. You know, half Thor he deadlifted 501 kilograms. Was that 1,200 pounds? My goal is I'm gonna Atlas lift 502 kilograms just to see what's so. up. Um, oh, and also uh, on Amazon's, um, I got the not sorry, not Amazon, just a random website. I just Googled it. Um, I got this like 3M matte black. Vinyl wrap for the car. Actually, surprisingly, I just cut off a piece and I put in front of the my Lumix G9 just to cover up the, the emblem. It actually really works well on uh, cameras too. So I guess you could matte black wrap a, a camera. It's another 
another use case people don't talk about. So uh, maybe I should start doing that. Just give me your give me your Rika, a matte black rapid, a matte pink white rapid. Gee, uh, yeah, not a not a super terrible idea, right? Uh, people wrapping their car. Yeah, wrap your camera. I think uh, better to wrap your camera than buy a new one. Hmm. Yeah, not a bad idea. Um, and actually, the funny thing too is talking about preferences. Essentially, every photographer, sooner or later, street photographer, whatever, will aspire to get some sort of Leica, like whether it be a film Leica, an M6, an MP, uh, mechanical perfection. That's what MP stands for. Facts. Black paint. Uh, 35 Simicron is probably the best lens. Uh, shout out to my friends uh, Bellamy Hunt and uh, Charlie Kirks. Internal gratitudes. Um, even Thomas Leutard, 85mm.ch. Uh, yeah. It's kind of uh, really enjoy these morning walks because like, you just feel so so zen and zenicas. Yeah. I need to figure out who owns this park. It's like so nice. Every time I go on this walk, it uh, brings great joy and delight. And actually, uh, this is something that people don't understand, right? So the goal of life is to be out in this, right? It ain't to be like stuck in your apartment, your house, your mansion, your skyscraper thingy, right? Condo. So actually, yeah, and actually the rooftop bar, you just jump into the elevator, go up there real quick. Actually, the funny thing is, the one thing I learned from uh, the street photographer David Gibson is like, when you walk in around, look down, and look up. People never look up, right? It often is funny, is people up there is like, be looking down at people's, you look up and then you see them looking at you, and then you just wave at them, right? So uh, that's a good idea, good ideas. Um, yeah, I know, I like, I like LA, I think, uh, I even own urkim.la now, um, EK, EK. So, the reason why LA is so good is, I mean like, my mom sent me pictures in Seoul and uh, Korea, um, it's a, uh, it's like everything snowing. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, like snow is I did, right? Um, Providence, Rhode Island is snow and shit, right? But uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, still being here, I mean, like, I like it get pretty cold at night. But I don't know, I still do think it's a nice freedom to just be, good morning, um, just be able to walk around, do these morning strolls and walks. Um, oh, so if you're curious about the EK lifestyles, uh, lately, I've been going super early, I kind of wind down around like 8 p.m. Usually hit the sack around uh, 9 p.m. And I'll just like naturalistically, I've just been waking up at like, like 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m., 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m. If I sleep in 5 a.m., I guess. Yeah, I don't know why. I, was, I don't know. I wish this upon my worst enemy, but uh, I mean, I, I, I think I feel fine. I wake up, have my coffees. Or can. Oh my god, coffee, hundred percent fine robustas. Just Google it. Um, yeah, just some think at the house that it is right. And the secret is ice cold showers, and then try to take insanely hot, boiling hot showers. So like super cold, then super effing boiling hot, then super cold, and just alternate it a few times. Then pop out. It's a good way to get your metabolisms going. And if your house apartment is, has a heater, it's cold, just fucking crank up the heat, just put it to max, put it to 90 degrees, put it to 120 degrees. And once you start getting hot and sweaty and then turn that shit off, and then uh, just go on a walk. Uh, similarly speaking, um, certain things I discovered more recently, which I wish I knew earlier, was, especially when it's like kind of cold and frigid, your body's not feeling too good, right? Just uh, take a cold shower and then uh, start, uh, uh, hopefully you have a tub, if you don't have a tub, just do a really, really hot shower. And then just do an insanely hot bath. So everyone's talking about the, what, Jack Dorsey and everyone, right? They're talking about, oh yes, so nice. I love this building. Your arch, great architecture puts me in a good mood too. Right? So anyways, um, uh, taking an insanely, insanely hot bath is actually very refreshing because like, it soaks into your bones and you just, just vibe on it. And then the secret is, when you are insanely, insanely, insanely hot bath, you want it to be to the point where your body's almost scalding. Like, like you're actually in physical pain, but like, you're not 
permanently injuring yourself. So it's almost the exact opposite of cold training. Like people talk about cold training, nobody talk about hot training. And I guess that's where it's interesting to do that, like a hot yoga, a uh, hot eight or something like that, right? Apparently at hot eight, they crank up the thermostat to like 120 degrees with uh, humidities. And some people critique it. I mean, I've done a few, I like it. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, my only critique criticism is that like, I just want to pop in, do my thing and just be out. It's like, I stay here for an hour. It's like, I really don't think any sort of fitness workout class, you don't really need to be more than like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes. What, the F45 or something, they do 40, I'm like, that's too much time, it's like, do you remember the things like 10 minute abs and seven minute F, five minute F, I'm like 30 second abs. Um, the easiest way to get a six pack, 100% carnivore diet, immune fasting, cut out all the BS, uh, no sugar, no starches, no no Coke Zero, yeah, Splenda makes you fat. Um, people don't like to think about that. And essentially the, the secret and the name of the game is, yeah, 100% carnivore diet, one insanely huge dinner at night, no breakfast and no lunch, get your testosterone up. Um, so, uh, continuing our thoughts, continuing our thoughts. So yeah, it's a pain and it is not virtuous, right? So I think, so the, the, then, the, then, the, then the question is, why do people make this silly assumption and this silly line of thinking that more pain is? I mean, I think it's this weird like Christian, Judeo something uh, thing where it's like pain and suffering and glory is, is a good thing. Um, Things to think about, I mean, honestly, and this is me critically thinking, right? You know, Christianity, which is essentially Judaism uh, 2.0. Uh, you know, Judaism, the religion started by the Moses. Essentially, Judaism, Jews, Judea. We, we, I think the best way to think about, uh, something I need to figure out, right? Like, people call it Jewish or Jew. What does Jewish or Jew have to do with... Uh, um, Jewish or Jew have to deal with Judea. Judea was the the kingdom, state, you know, citadel place. Um, but anyways, it was, it was founded by Moses, right? And even like an Israeli scholar, I forget the name, his name. Um, Israel something, right? Was like, uh, well, okay, so take a step back, right? So Tacitus on the Jews is probably the best thing we could read in regards to the critical historical understanding of the Jewish peoples, right? So, different theories about who they was, right? I think, I mean, as of now, my current interesting thought is essentially people don't realize and they don't think, right? Moses, so think Moses, right? Moses, the guy who parted the Red Sea, right? So, um, Moses, you know, one of the theories is, I mean, from the, the same Israeli scholar, right? And he's Jewish, right? So it's cool. Um, is that... Like, something about, like, Moses was, like, an illegitimate son of, like, one of the Egyptian pharaohs or something. And, uh, and as a consequence... Um, uh, like... And then Moses tried to gain power and try to overthrow the Pharaoh. And then like he kind of failed, so he was kind of kicked out. So he took a bunch of his uh took a bunch of his homeboys and the peoples to follow him. Uh, because he said, Men and God has uh, the men and the gods have forsaken me, da -da -da and find the promised land, right? So So yeah, and then he instituted a religion. Will you understand, right? Uh, so then the Jewish people, his ancestors, whatevs could exist into perpetuity, right? And certain things which uh, Tacitus finds interesting. So this is where studying history is so good because like, it's like, just go back enough in history, people don't care about being like woke, politically correct, all this, uh, all this nonsense, right? So even like uh, Tacitus was like, it is like, so I guess the Romans, ancient Spartans, etc. like if your kid was like sick or misshapely, whatever, they would just hurl your kid over the, over the cliff, and then even uh, some of the ancient thinkers were things like, isn't it more cruel to let the kid live if they come out like, you know, what we nowadays consider like what, uh, you know, kind of like mental, physiological, 
uh, you know, mishaps or whatevs, right? Uh, when things, some things were a bit off, right? But then apparently Jewish people didn't do that because they wanted to increase their numbers, etc., right? And so a lot of the, the you know, Jewish traditions, etc., was essentially founded based on premises um, of Egyptian thought, like the afterlife, etc. So there's, there's apparently a good exhibition at the the, the Getty or the LACMA, one of those, um, about this. Need to do some uh, research, eh? Hmm. Um, Couldn't afford a car, so I named her daughter Alexis, right? So, uh... But anyways, um... Studying the ancient Roman... So, once again, let's think back to ancient Greek, the Iliad. So, in ancient Greek, Greece, Iliad it is, um, the gods were essentially like... Humans, fallible humans, except they uh, they lived longer, <laughs> and they didn't have to eat food. They just drink ambrosia, right? And what I kind of like about the ancient uh, Greeks, right, Romans, etc., is, is essentially the ancient Greeks they created their own gods in the images of man, right? So like Zeus is just kind of sleeping around, kind of like always like having drama with Hera, his wife, the, the queens, right? And then like all the like these like, you know, rambunctious kids essentially just kind of causing havoc and just meddling in the affairs of humans, right? And uh, yeah, and then also the gods sleep, Zeus goes to sleep. And maybe then what becomes weird is like, kind of monotheism, like just one ever omnipotent god who nobody really know what he looked like and he's always watching you, right? And even super interesting is what the ancient Romans, like, you know, the Tacitus and people who conquered them, right? They were confused because they're like, wait, you don't create statues of your gods, you don't even know what your gods or God looks like, right? So then finally when they conquer the citadel of Judea, they open up the coffers and the citadel and they're like, wait, there's no statues, there's no nothing in here, they're just like confused, right? And so the ancient Romans were just like very confused, they're like, who are these, like, the people of Judea, the Jewish people, the Jews, of like, they're like, this is like contrary to everything that we Romans believe in, right? Like even um, Romans, technically, they was very, um, you know, open-minded, liberal, you know, they were, they were technically the original woke people, right? Like, the Romans were like, well, I don't get it, you know, we conquered you, it is, but then we'll give you protection, you know, you could borrow our gods, your bars could, you know, we could share gods, like, you could, you know, like, just do it, just, just pay your taxes and we good, right? And so, think about ancient Rome, the Holy Roman Empire, seems like a good idea. Um, but anyways, so, taking it back to America, so what does America want? I mean, certainly to uh, continue her dominance on the planet. I mean, whether people like her or not, right? America, we conquer the planet by, you know, 100,000 X that of anyone else. Like, no, 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 not Russia. Russia's, <laughs> Russia's weak. Putin is a, I don't know how tall Putin is, right? Like, does Putin even lift weights? Um, yeah, Putin's a he's a he's a wimp. Um, mainland Chinese, like mainland Chinese, right? Like, I think uh, ah, funny thought, right? So you know, China, mainland China, they're trying to create like I don't know cyber warfare or something like that, right? And I'm like, do the Chinese even make their own computers? Like what? Xiaomi, Huawei, like? Can you imagine like? mainland China going to a cyber war with America and then they just use like Windows 95, right? So as long as America has intelligence, cyber intelligence, the computers, why well, America's fine, right? Like, and actually like, I was brainwashed a lot as a kid thinking the military was evil, blah, blahs. But like, truth be told, the military is what runs the planet. He or she with the biggest stick shall win. Um, our, the war, you know, even like Galliani says, uh la moneta on monies, he said that the Wars are won by iron, not gold. And even uh, ancient places like um, Holland, right? The Dutch, Amsterdam, right? Venice. 
they they hired for uh, foreign merc uh, mercenaries. Mercenary comes from uh, mercs, M E R X, like a merchant. So people who trade their lives for money, mercenaries. Um, yeah, because the richer you are, you would rather part of some of your money than to die, <laughs> right? And then typically it's poor people. That's why, like, in the typically in the American military, right? Like, the really, really, really front lines, what Marines and stuff, right? Um, people sent to Afghanistan typically come from like marginalized, like Latino, Cambodian peoples. Um, to know whether somebody's a real patriot or not is if they've done some sort of military service or you know, Boy Scouts, Eagle Scouts, like any of this stuff, right? And so then the reason why we shouldn't poo-poo on uh, Jewish people is there's a lot of Jewish people in the, the military uh, based on, you know, real life people that I know. Um, there's actually a lot of military recruiters who are Jewish, Jewish American born in the States, right? But then the tricky thing is they have to be kind of like closet Jewish because um, America is ultimately anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic. Um, I think was it Nietzsche who said the the you know <laughs> uh, the Christians ha still haven't forgiven the Jewish people for killing Jesus, right? And yeah, it's, it's true. Jesus was Jewish. He wasn't trying to start a really a new religion, right? He was like the OG uh, kind of flipping everything on its belly. Even modern day Christianity as we know it. You know, we just read the Antichrist uh, by Nietzsche. Should be considered Saint Paulism, and yeah, Saint Paul was kind of a tormented soul. Uh, yeah, so yeah, don't 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 trust none of that. Anyways, and also went to the Skirball exhibit. Um, I think what's the name of the Mister Skirball? Skirball is like he was like a movie Jewish 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 American movie producer from the from like a hundred years ago. Produce the thing you create Jewish culture. There's a great Noah's Ark exhibit. We we done seen it with Sen. He loved it. Um, and uh, and yeah. So I think uh, one of the critical things about you know Jewish Jewish American people is what is right is that um, that'll be two dollars, please. <laughs> Alright, cool, cool, cool. Um, so yeah, I think. Uh, the, um, yeah, like, you know, think about Alice Island and stuff like that, right? So, why do Americans or why do people hate Jewish people, right? It's like, don't hate Jewish people because they're smarter, wiser, more intelligent than you are. So, the, the reason why Jewish people are so great, oh yeah. Thank you, Mr. Michael Hackman, for creating such a beautiful place. <laughs> Actually, in fact, people are this, I'm like, <laughs> Is it possible? Like, I'm anti-anti-Semitic. <laughs> well, I'm finna make a shirt. Anti-anti-Semitic club, right? Um, anyone who's anti-Semitic, use a pussy. Only pussies are anti-Semitic. Just to quote uh, Michael Bay. There's a chat chat between Michael Bay quotes. So it's a, anyone who changes their style to please their audience are a bunch of pussies. <laughs> and this is funny. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start talking like a high school again. F it. F it. Um, this is why EK is still so popular with the high schoolers, because uh, yeah, I'm like I done stopped uh, at age 16, like Eminem aging in reverse, right? And yeah, actually, even at 35, uh, my testosterone, everything is, is like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm better at 35 than I was 25. The best version of myself was still probably my like 16, 17 year old self um, before I got corrupted by the systems. So time to to get back to where I started, right? A time to take. So I bought every V12 engine. Time to take it back to the beginning, right? Um, freestyle thinking, right? Um, so the one of the benefits. Look, anyways, they're talking about talking about more about, right? So think about it. Like the reason why Jewish people are so resilient, right? So you try to kill them, you can't kill them all, right? Uh, the ultimate anti-fragile race is uh, even like Nietzsche, right? Everyone, you know, like Nietzsche was like very pro-Jewish people. Like he looked at Jewish people anti uh Nietzsche was actually crit critical of anti-Semitic because apparently Richard Wagner, the composer, was like super anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic. Um, 
And I, I think the reason why anti-Semitic is a good notion is if Nietzsche mentions it, posted on the door of an anti-Semite, it is, right? Then it's probably a good notion. Um, so even in Nietzsche's time, like he wrote this like 300 years ago, people would still hate on Jewish people for controlling finance and stuff like that, right? But it's because Jewish people were like a marginalized peoples in a race and all they could do was to do finances because that was the only legit way to survive, right? Or become medical doctors and you know, stuff like that, right? So then a lot of people's super salty about this. Oh, wow, look, let's make some good progress. Nice, right? So a lot of people salty about it because um, Jewish people are so good with money, right? Like, like Kanye says, like, what people make money, don't spend it. I'd rather buy 80 gold chains to go in there. No, 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 I'm gonna let you finish, right? So, um, so what Jewish people are really good at is being very critical of money and they don't just waste it, right? Like, even, um, like one of my uh, one of my old students um, who did my workshop in downtown LA, right? Living in Beverly Hills, pulled up, and like he's from Beverly Hills, right? So obviously he's got uh, he's got dinero, right? And he just pulls up like in just like a super base, the Olympic pen, right? Olympus pen, and I'm like, I was so shocked because I'm like, super rich. Is like, why don't you pull up in the at, at the time I like M9, right? That was that was the it camera. Uh, like a no more, uh, real men shoot with Ricoh GR3, three, three X's, or more recently, Eric Kim the the Lumix G9, G9 Mark II is apparently up, um, and pancakes all the way, flapjacks, called the IHOP uh, IHOP uh, camera lenses, the what well, Lumix f2.5 14 millimeter spherical 30, um, lens, the pancake lens, only like 200 bucks on Amazon. Um, oh, and also it's like, should you buy lenses and stuff on B&H for Amazon? Just buy it on Amazon, Just it's just way easier. Um, and also <laughs> advice is like, uh, it's, like <laughs> it's like, God bless uh, b and I think they're owned by Jewish people, I think. They've been around forever, anyways. Um, so, so yeah, people hate on rich people and Jewish people because they still go with money, right? Um, and it looks like the ethos of a lot of Jewish people and stuff like that, right? Is like you want to keep indefinitely increasing your money, your wealth, and just kind of want to keep making that number go up and up and up indefinitely. And as a consequence, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, make money, don't spend it, right? And then like, and then I think Jewish people are really good at creating, preserving their wealth and then passing on to the next generations. Um, so even um, seeing the exhibit is quite interesting. It's talking about inter intergenerational wealth, right? So I mean, honestly, I should be pretty pretty grateful and fortunate that like even Cindy's family, like Cindy's family comes from uh, gold merchants. My uh, my grandfather, uh, mom's side, super famous, uh, you know, doctor, calligrapher. I think he met the president a few times. Even my um, one of my one of my emo harabijis, like my my uncle. My in-law um, grandfather's. He was like secretary at the Blue House. Blue House is like the white. So he was in such the politics, right? So uh, the the Kim Jeans uh, run strong. And then on my dad's side, right? Apparently my dad's my dad's dad, aka my um, grandfather, on my my dad's side, right? He was like a very very successful um, merchant. I think he sold like, but then just, I mean I don't know the whole story, right? But like sold alcohol kind of illegitimately but anyways he made a bunch of money he had a car mom and dad right and then he even uh, I mean I still have the the stainless steel Rolex that he my grandpa bought can you imagine this is a post-war career everyone like super porn shit right and then like that, that that watch cost more than a house or a car right and how much is that watch worth now and there's a family heirloom finna pass it down to sand and stuff like that right Anyway, so, so much, so much, so much, so much, so much wealth is passed down from generation, from generation to generation. And I think the intelligence of a, a Jay-Z, right? is like, legacy, 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 right? Is that you didn't start with anything. You start from the bottom 
You start from the mud. Came from the came from the mud. First put a hood on jet. First put a hood on Molly. Okay. And then so essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to build up wealth and pass it on to your progeny. And your progeny finna pass it on to their progeny. So anybody who don't want to have a kid. I guess they don't really care about their legacy. I mean, that's cool. I mean, like, you don't go force people to have no kids. But if you really want maximum happiness and power in the world, you just like have kids. Because once your once your what's your genetics die, you're dead forever, right? Um, or <laughs> like to quote Nietzsche, right? Libri ot libri. It's like either your children or books. He was quoting about women's. But yeah, I think. I mean, I don't know. I think I think philosophers. All philosophers should have at least one kid, because then you start to learn about, you know, philosophy, the knowledge, wisdom, learning, uh, etc. I find all of this uh, very, very interesting. Um, yeah, pretty good. So, uh, man, I'm like so two minds about J.P. Morgan chasing fucking gangster and take fucking forever. But the same thing. Is kind of, so, Chase, J.P. Morgan, Chase, these motherfuckers, right? I mean, like. Still a little salty, but uh, fuck it. Uh, Chase is good because, I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, it's by far the best international banking institution, uh, et cetera, Visa, whatevs. But I mean, fucking dysfunction. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the future is Chase needs to get into crypto tokenization, these kind of assets, whatevs, and uh, make things better. Also, the good thing. Well, Chase's, they got like a trillion ATMs everywhere, so you always have access to money. Anyways, so even uh, think about money, right? What is money good for? Super, super simple. Paying rent, buying meat at Costco groceries. And then after that, the question then is, what is the point of wealth? Stay clear from the 5150s. The co co crazy peoples. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, don't 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 trust the, the crazies. Uh hmm. Okay, pronounce nothing. Pass out for Stacy! Okay. So uh continue the thoughts, continue the thoughts. Um but 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 get to LA from this room. Uh, maybe I'll not go. Um, oh, also the funny thoughts. I guess also an interesting social economical thoughts about creating your own gym, your own off the grid gyms, and your own parking lot, garage, homes, whatevs, is uh, <laughs> maybe less likelihood of getting sick from all these other random people at the gym. Actually, the funny thing too is uh, with the gym, it is the word gym, gym knows, it means naked, topless, like. The, the, the generalized I'm gonna start my own bank Fuck it I'm finna start my own bank If you wanna Become a Bitcoin billionaire Shoot me an email At eric at ericim.com I'm thinking about starting a fund I call it Black Eagle Kinda like Black Rock Or what, Blackstone or, why, why is it Why are all these things black? 20 cars mad black right? So Black Eagle So I'm a Boy Scouts Eagle Scouts Eagles are good Eagles represent America Um of a, the the reason why I mean, good morning um, so the, the reason why I like this idea is uh, um, <laughs> it's like even Nietzsche's talking about right that like do you want to be the lamb or the eagle right people always say sheep sheep was not not a sheep don't be a lamb <laughs> um, <laughs> right <laughs> like people shouldn't be like don't be a pussy don't be a lamb so the average person, human being in society, they're a bunch of lambs, right? Um, well, that's actually interesting. They call it Lamborghinis or lambs, delicious little Lamborghini lambs, right? So would you rather be the eagle or the lamb? The, 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 the lambs are always complaining, oh, these eagles are always trying to do it, right? And the, the eagles are like, lambs are delicious. They're so tasty, right? Uh, <laughs> it actually is so funny too, because in terms of the hierarchies, right? Certainly ain't nobody supposed to naturalistically be eating nothing, right? Like, like, people's like, oh, humans are meant to eat X, Y, and Z, and not. I'm like, 
it's like, we ain't meant to drink coffee. I mean, like, just fucking poison, right? You're not supposed to be drinking fucking alkaline water. Anyone who drinks alkaline water and the, like, you guys are, <laughs> you guys are non-critical thinkers. Um, yeah, people, everyone's so sick, right? Um, trust nobody who don't have a full body tan. Uh, what is that? Venice ghetto. Um, anyways. Walking off the grid, thinking up the grid. We off the grid, grid, grid for my kid, kid, kids, right? So yeah, Culver City's betters got your own 90232 zip codes, right? Um so yeah, so I'm thinking about starting like a crypto hedge fund. It's gonna be centered around like Bitcoin, Chainlink. I'm still trying to do more research about uh, other good investments. Current, I mean, like Ethereum, maybe, but still, like I don't know, Ethereum is kind of the reason why I kind of don't really like Ethereum too much is that I think I think the problem with Ethereum is trying to do too many things, and then because they done made Ethereum what the version two and the splitting the fork and it just, it's just too complicated. Anything that's too complicated is bad, right? So the reason why I'm still super, super lit about the the Bitcoins, right? Bitcoin, I got the big bucks, right? No money, no honey, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, actually it's, it's so, man, like, it's so funny. It's like in the war, Vietnam war, right? All these Vietnamese women, they're so smart, right? Like they'd be uh, trying to sell wares to the American foreigner men, right? This, then it's like, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. And then the American men are like, no, we can't buy your stuff. And then the, the, the Vietnamese Asian women be like, no money, no honey. And then the guys feel e mask goes, I, I, I buy, I buy it, right? Um, super smart. Uh, so yeah, the, the first thought about becoming super rich is uh, essentially your body is your bank account. If you got a six pack, full body tan, super jacked, EK demigod status, physics, the killer, the Achilles warrior technique, then uh, use uh, use golden, right? Uh, and actually, the funny thing with being fat, over fat, obese, right? Whatever people say it's overweight, just say, just call spade a space. Like you fat, you over fat, uh, and is fat a binary? No, it's certainly, it's certainly degrees, right? Like, you could be, like, kind of a little bit fat, right? So, I mean, simple thoughts, simple thoughts. I mean, the first one is, like, uh, base level, everyone's sick, uh, men, women included. Uh, only fit, who's fit? I don't, I don't know nobody who fit. It's like, don't trust none of these, like, tech losers who do CrossFit. I mean, like, just like a great, okay. You always got to start at the source. Good morning. You always got to start at the source. So, look at... The founder of um, Wash your car. That, uh, um, um, <laughs> uh, uh, Hanudi's uh, name for the Wash your car is Dada. Actually, yeah, actually, people, I don't know. JP Morgan Chase, I don't know, nice, brutal. Okay, so yeah, time, time, time for me to start my own banks, okay? Um, uh, prices go up and down, right? So, men with big balls get into Bitcoin. Big balls, big big coins, right? Uh, yeah, my my life aspiration is I want to hoard at least a hundred bitcoins, a thousand bitcoins, ten thousand, one billion bitcoins, right? And it's like, what is one bitcoin worth? One bitcoin is worth one bitcoin. <laughs> um, I also think that. I mean, okay, these are just some pragmatic thoughts, right? So I think in the future, right? Especially that fiat currency is uh, is not a good source of the uh, the wealth management. So I would not be surprised if 20, 30 years down the line, you know, you could use two or three, like, I, okay, so this is my, this is my mental pegging, right? I think one Bitcoin is worth at least $1 million USD as if uh, this time, right? And so, you know, you people sell a house for $1 million, $2 million, $3.9, uh, $3 million, $5 million, whatever, $10 million. I wouldn't be surprised there'll be a future, you could buy a house for uh, one Bitcoin, 
You could buy a nicer house for two Bitcoin. You could buy a really, really nice for three Bitcoin. Buy a super, super nice house for 10 Bitcoin. You buy a crazy mesh for 150 Bitcoin, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, still at the end of the day, at least in America's, um, probably the, the greatest source of wealth is probably land, like land ownership. Yeah, you want to own the land. Yeah, sounds about right. Like even Cindy's mom who's done real estate a long time, right? Um, uh, you want to buy a house? Oh, yeah. Maybe I should put my mom on film. Like, if you want to buy a house in Orange County, SoCal, Westminster, Garden Grove, etc., uh, contact Cindy's mom, Kim Fam Real Estate at gmail.com. That is K I M P H A M. Kim Fam, K I M P H A M Real Estate, R E A L E S T A T at gmail.com. Uh, but, anyways, so Cindy's mom's pretty wise. Um, I think that the wisdom of Cindy's mom is that she knows it that, that like uh, certain things not to do. Don't buy a condo. You don't own the land. And technically, the house could be built for super. T like, if you build an additional dwelling unit, um, ADU, um, you could build it from scratch and it's like two hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? Which is like relatively cheap, I guess, um, from the studs up. But the most important thing is you got to own the land to build it on. I mean, honestly, it's all still kind of a scam because you still got to pay property taxes, etc. Uh, right? But I mean, eventually, eventually, someone needs uh, you need a place to live, I guess, right? Uh, yeah, whatever, right? But I mean, certain things I'm also fortunate about. Also, the good thing about getting married is technically you become wealthier because you have access to two sides of the family. So even certain things that I'm very fortunate for is Cindy's mom, in fact, they own real estate, they own their own property, right? So still, at the end of the day, traveling abroad and taxes and stuff like that, we still have this permanent home address that we could always send shit to, right? So uh, yeah, hashtag grateful. And actually, uh, my ultimate takeaway about family, family drama, blah, blah, is with greater benefits comes greater annoyances, right? So having family, more family to do this, like, is going to cause more drama to do it, but also with that comes more benefits. So if you want more benefits, maybe having more drama and annoyances is uh, it's just, just part of the game. F and say love you, right? Um, so... Thinking about all this, then the, the thought is, I'm um, buy property, whatever. I don't know, still at the end of the day though, it's like people focusing so much about becoming wealth, wealthier, becoming rich, successful, blah, blah, right? But that's really not the goal here. I think, uh, you know, ain't nobody finna care. About, like, like, think about it this way. Alexander the Great, name that's gonna forever be remembered in time. Uh, the philosophers, the Stoics, is, is, right? The name is finna gonna be remembered for the rest of times, Achilles. It's like Homer. Um, my personal prediction too is that you know everyone thinks of Homer as being the idiot from The Simpsons, but I think two, three thousand years from now, when ain't nobody watched or know what The Simpsons ain't no more, uh, the name Homer is gonna come back in vogue. Uh, <laughs> like next time somebody asks my name, I'm gonna say my name is Homer. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody always think about Homer as the idiot, right? Or my name is Bart. My name is Calvin, Calvin Hobbes, right? It's like, my name is Ash Ketchum. <laughs> my name is Gyarados. My name is Magikarp. My name is uh, Charmander, Pikachu. Actually, my favorite... Uh, so actually, another thing you should always ask a millennial, it's like, who's your favorite Pokemon? It's like, I'm 35. It's, like, it's cool, it's like, I watched Pokemon as a kid growing up. Kids now are watching Pokemon Light. That's great. The think uh, God bless the Japanese, right? So yeah, the the secret was you wanted the Magic Card to become a Gyarados, and once it became a Gyarados, I was uh, super happy about that. Shout out from uh, Ryan from Backyard Brew, Palo Alto. People don't know this, but uh, I'm pretty certain that in fact it was actually. Um, uh, it was actually Ryan from Ryan from Backyard Brew, who I think invented the notion of MVP, minimum viable product, 
and I'm sure that there was some like loser tech person who just stole his idea and popularized it, right? Um, yeah, anyways, super facts. Uh, right? Oh yeah, also you don't want to be Jeff Bezos, who's only five foot seven. You don't want to be A, who's what, five five? You want to be Kendrick, who's like five two. Who's tall? Jay-Z 6'2". I mean, good to be a Jay-Z. I'd rather be a Jay-Z. And then Jay-Z just need to lift some weights and need to hit the legs like, I skip leg day, I still run the world. Uh, uh, kind of a funny thought, funny thought, funny thought. Um, i continue my walk, continue my walk. Uh, another, another thing that's interesting to think about is Everyone's trying to become a more productive thinker. You don't self-flagellate yourself into productive thinking. First, just go on a walk, and then the thoughts will come naturally. And this is where I really like kind of this street vlogging notion is that, you know, even though I do voice dictation on my iPad Pros, um, the cadence of your thoughts and then the, your tone, your intonation, etc., it's much more natural when you're doing it via your voice rather than typing it. In fact, I think uh, almost all modern academic scholars, people, right? Just look at them in the flesh, right? It's like, when's the last time you've been to the beach, bro? When's the last time you took off your shirt? Good morning. Um, and the thing is, I don't trust no people's, like, okay, I was even doing research about, there's like a new brand, I think it's been around for a minute, 10,000.cc, it's like a clothing brand, makes some uh, pretty cool workout clothes. Uh, right? Um, and I was like, who's the founders? And this, because the founders, it's like, it's like, neither is like, do you guys even lift weights, right? And then trust nobody who's a triathlon. Anyways, so I'm like looking at these founders, right? Who never look like they lifted weights in their lives, right? And then I just think to myself, it's like, why would you? Like, why would you buy fitness apparel or workout clothes from a company that was founded by dudes who don't even lift weights? It kind of makes no sense. Uh, so always look at the founders, go on a Google image of what the founders look like, and then try to find photos of them topless. So, how, will you ever find a photo of Greg Glassman topless working out? No, because why? He's never lifted a weight in his life. So. Unless you've ever seen seven plates, eight plates, nine plates, 10 plates, 10 plates, 10 plates 10 point 10.5 on each side, you don't got nothing to say. Um, yeah, don't uh, don't trust nobody's. Um, I can't even pronounce the name, Passa Versace. Um, yeah, weather's well, like insanely warm to have a fucking love it. Oh, also fun fact about the Culver Studios owned by Mr. Michael Hackman. Apparently uh, Gone with the Wind was actually filmed here, right? Yeah, Culver Studios. People don't know this, but uh, yeah, Amazon, Amazon Prime. It is right. God, uh, God, uh, God bless the heart of Jeff Bezos. Man, I'm like everyone you be hating on Jeff Bezos. It's like, it's like, don't get at me. It's like, if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you have ever bought anything on Amazon, like you have no right to critique the great Jeff. Be Actually, Jeff Bezos is super underrated because when he was an innovator and entrepreneur. He's the one who straight up went to the store in his, what, Honda Accord, dropping off packages and shit, right? And anyways, the, the Culver Studios, Amazon Prime, Prime Video taking over, Heart of Screenland. Even there's like a new Mr. and Mr. Smithwood, Daniel Glover and the other guys. Yeah, it's gonna be a good future here in Culver.